Hey, welcome back to Left Brain Liz. I'm Liz, and I'm going to talk today about the differences between what is perceived as a cheap watercolor paint versus a more expensive brand. And right now, I have laid out um, a few of like the the one-off uh, paint tubes that I have here. You can see here at the top, I have. Um, kind of a rainbow assortment of Cotman watercolors, which are actually the the cheapest of the, I guess, well-known watercolors that are out there. Um, I only have two Daniel Smiths, and they're right here, and uh, I didn't really have any kind of uh, rhyme or reason for why I picked the upper pink, only that I liked it. Um, but then I found out later that it's not very light fast, but that's okay. It's very vibrant, and I like it a lot. Um, and uh, I ended up buying this one because I'm going to be doing my comparison with this one. Um, I have this Core watercolor, which um, it's spelled Q-O-R, but I guess it's pronounced Core. Um, and I just got this Aurelian Modern, which um, I guess Aurelian is kind of like a Latin word for gold, I guess. I, I mean, but uh, it's a very vivid, bright, bright yellow. And uh, it's very pretty, very transparent. Um, I might invest in more of those in the future. They're about the same price as the Daniel Smith colors. Um, I have four of these Sennelier, Sennelier, I don't, it's a French watercolor, so I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but, um, I have it in Lamp Black, um, this Cenarius Blue, which I'm not sure what that means, Neutral Tint, and Quinacridone Red. Um, I bought the black and the red on my own, and then I got these in an art snacks box, which uh, you should have seen the video uh, a couple weeks back. I have one from Van Gogh, which I haven't really heard a lot of reviews on that, but when I was testing it out myself, I really liked it. It was very vivid, very um, pigmented, and just went a really long way, and it was the same price as the Cotman watercolors, so um, for... You, and you actually get more too. I guess this, it doesn't say on the bottle. I can't remember how much, a third of an ounce, which is, I guess an ounce is 28 mils. So I'm not really sure. Um, so about 10 mils, I guess. So anyway, um, and then on the side here, I actually have a ton of these, but I didn't want to put them all here. See, I have just a ton of them in here. Um, these are called Reeves watercolor, which I'm sure people have heard of them, but these are like the cheapest of the cheap. I got like an 18 pack of colors for like 10 bucks, and then with a Michaels coupon for 50% off, it was like five dollars. So, this is like the cheapest cheap that you can find. Um, when I first started using like bottle or not bottled, but like uh, tube watercolor paints, this is what I started with, and I didn't really care, I didn't really notice the difference because I never used anything like this. So anyway, um, I started to get the Cotman watercolors because I was like, hey, these are still pretty inexpensive, but they're considered more of a step up from like Reeves or something like that. And then I just got really interested in like the pigmentations and like the different brands and the formulations because, uh, I mean, technically I am a formulation biochemist. So like formulations, I don't know, it's, it's a nerdy thing, but it really interests me. So anyway, um, Today I'm going to talk about the differences between this Daniel Smith and my Cotman color here. So I'm going to go ahead and put these away so I don't get them mixed in there. But anyway, so my Daniel Smith color, um, it is phthalo green of the blue shade and uh, you probably can't see it it's really teeny tiny oh, there it is um, <laughs> really teeny tiny I don't even know if my camera can focus in on it uh, yeah that's probably as good as it'll get but anyway it's pigment PG7 um, I had a hard time trying to find two that were of the same pigment between the two because they like to name them differently. So this one from Cotman is actually Viridian Hue, which does not have the word phthalo green in it at all. And they actually have a phthalo green um, 
in the Cotman line, but it's uh, it just says Thalo Green Bright or something like that. The pigment is different. So this one is the same pigment. You probably can't tell from here, but it's also PG7, um, which it stands for pigment green. Um, if you see like an NG, that's like natural green. So it would be like a naturally derived uh, color. But um, if you, it just depends on who you ask to, like what they would consider like a natural color um, versus a just a regular pigment or a synthetic but anyway so this is what I have here and um, I will show you the um, websites comparison of the two here now okay so this one here is from the um, uh, I'm sorry Windsor and Newton Cotman uh, website there and you can see I, I selected the Viridian hue um, they say it's non-granulating, but it is staining, and the color series is one, which means it's the cheaper one, but they're all the same price, so it doesn't really matter. The permanence rating is pretty high, not the highest it can go, but the uh, second to most. Um, the pigment is the PG7, which stands for pigment green, and then the light fastness is um, also pretty high there, and it says it's a transparent color. Now here is the page from the Daniel Smith site and it pretty much says the same type of things, non-granulating, staining, pretty light fast and um, transparent, the same pigment, PG7, and uh, this is just a little bit of different view. So both images were taken directly from their websites, which I will link in the description as well. Okay, so... Um Usually when I get a tube of paint, the first thing I do is I like to put it in a little pan and let it dry. And I did this when I got home a while, a few hours ago. And I don't know if you can tell from here, but um, this one over here is the Daniel Smith. And this one over here <laughs> is the Cotman. And you can see that the Daniel Smith is still very wet compared to the Cotman. Not that the Cotman is dry by any means, but it's already formed that, that skin on top where it's starting to dry. So there's something definitely different in the formulation. And for this demonstration, I put some out on a plate and uh, you can see that this is the Cotman over here versus the Daniel Smith. And again, the Cotman already like pretty much immediately formed a skin. Um, the camera probably can't pick it up, but the colors look very different too. Um, I don't know if it's just the way the formulation is um, uh, different ratios of the, um, what is it? Gum Arabic. That's what it is. Uh, or what it is, but, uh, they look, they look so different. The, um, Daniel Smith color looks more blue and I don't know if it just has more pigment in it or what, what the deal is, but, um, anyway, we'll see what happens here and I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to do like a simple gradient wash and see what, see what happens. Um, so this is just Canson XL watercolor paper. It's cheap stuff you can get in a, in a pack here. Actually I have it right here. Um, I got this at Michael's for probably like $5. Um, on this side is going to be my Cotman watercolor and on this side is going to be my Daniel Smith. Um, I have here, in case you're curious, this is a Princeton Select uh, watercolor, well, I'm sorry, it's not watercolor specific, it's actually a multimedia brush, but it's a Princeton Select round number 12, so I really wanted a big one, um, I don't know, just <laughs> wild hair to get a big one, but I really like these, I have a couple more of them, um, I'm not really sure what the hair is made of, but it, I don't know, it stands up pretty well. So anyway, I'm going to start with my cotton on this, this side over here. I'm wetting my little nugget on my plate, just to see, but I think I first want to put like, I think I want to do wet on wet, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of wet my paper here. I have a slight angle going on here. Um, I'm using my tape to prop up my board. I have an easel and it's a tabletop easel, but I don't know. I'm too lazy to get it out half the time. So, okay, so here we go. We're gonna lay this down. Of 
according to the site, it's supposed to be non-granulating, um, very durable, and, well, the pigment anyway, so it shouldn't really matter who the brand is. Um, but I can see, and the camera may not be picking it up, but I can see the blue kind of as it fades down. I can see the blue kind of coming out uh, or reflecting more as it thins. So, oh, and this is cold press paper, so it's going to automatically have a granulated look to it versus like a hot press paper. And again, like I said, this the site claims that it's uh, non-granulating and light fast. I yeah, put too much water on here. That's okay. This isn't meant to be perfect. I'm just trying to see like how this is going to look. And I've never used this brush either, so yeah, it's a very pretty color. It's kind of just a lovely emerald green-ish kind of didn't really turn out as a gradient wash, but <laughs> whatever. I am not a pro. Like I said, I've been using Reeves. I kind of want to get like a nice thick application just to see. I'm trying to use as little, little water as possible. I just want to get like a nice thick layer up top to compare. Ooh, when I rinse out my brush too, it's like really blue. It's cool. Um, I'm going to give it a little bloom here too. So I'm going to put some water underneath it to give it some bloom. And it looks like, so I think one of the things it said was it's staining, high staining, which basically means that you can't really pick it back up off the paper, but it looks like it's coming up off the paper pretty good. So either this isn't staining that much or this paper is like <laughs> really water resistant or something. I don't know. Okay, now we move on to the Daniel Smith. Um, I don't have a lot of experience at all with Daniel Smith. Like I said earlier, I only have the two tubes and I've never even used this one. So this is new to me. And as I wet it, it looks, ooh, that is so neat. As I wet it, it definitely, um, looks the same color. So it just must be something in the formulation that when I put it in the pan, makes it look um, different color or something. I don't know. And I might even go as far to say that, and, and this might be a given too, just based on like the quality of the paint and whatnot, um, that the Daniel Smith is probably more pigmented. Um, I did put more water down on the Cotman side, but um, it seems like a little goes a little further with the Daniel Smith. One of these days I will master a flat wash, but that day is not today. And it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of sad that, I don't know, I've been watercoloring for maybe the past couple months now and I still can't even do a flat wash. I just keep wanting to go back up and changing things. get my big head in the way there. Usually when I do my work, I like to get my face right up in it. And whenever I have the camera on, I gotta be conscious not to do that. It's 
so I apologize whenever you see my big noggin kind of taking up the space just kind of having fun spreading this right now but if I were to make a quick comparison I would say that um, even though it's the same pigment um, the Daniel Smith looks slightly more blue than the Cotman um, not that there's anything wrong with the Cotman but it's interesting because it's the same exact pigment that they claim to have in the um, tube. So, you know, the fact that it's a little bit more blue is kind of interesting to me. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try the same thing on hot pressed and see. So I don't see any granulation so far. Um, but the cold press is going to kind of automatically give it a, a granular look but anyway on to the hot press okay here's my hot press paper I have uh, this is the fluid brand um, I got it at my local art mart which uh, is actually specific for st. Louis area so um, I don't I don't know where else you can get fluid because I don't see it at Michaels or Dick Blick or anything like that but anyway um, so this is the fluid hot press, and if you're not really familiar with the differences between hot press and cold press, all it is is like, um, it's basically hot press does not have the tooth that the cold press would normally have. So that graininess that I was talking about earlier would not really show up in the hot press because it's more of a smooth surface versus kind of like a, like a bumply ripply one. Um, so yeah. That's what I have here, and I only have it in the size, so it's teeny tiny, but that's okay. So I got my Cotman on this side again, and my Daniel Smith on this side, so I'm going to go ahead and start with my Cotman. I'm not going to wet the paper like I did with the cold pressed. Um, I'm just going to load my brush up and bite. I like these round brushes. They're so, so nice. I used to do a lot of like Asian sumi kind of art. I don't know if it's because it wasn't really calligraphy that I did. It was just kind of like bamboo and orchids and stuff like that. And I used to use a brush just like this and it takes me back. So far, so good. Let's go on to the Daniel Smith. And even on my little palette here, the, the paint blob looks more blue. Very pigmented. Yeah, a pigment here. I'm pretty sure I only filled up the same amount on the brush as I did, so I would say Daniel Smith would. The reason for the price is the amount of pigment that goes in there. And if you're not familiar with the the like paint making process, um they send paints through a mill and it's like whatever the carrier is in this case it would be the gum arabic um, with the pigment and pigments are really small we're talking subvisible particles which is why um it, you get that smooth smooth surface i can see kind of some I don't know if that's pilling or pigment kind of coming up here, but I don't see it on the Cotman side, so I don't know. Maybe there's just, I laid down more pigment on this side, but it's not supposed to be granular. On the hot press, you, I think you'd be able to see that better. 
Um, but anyway, so the carrier, the gum arabic, um, has these teeny, teeny, tiny pigment particles to mash in there, and it goes through this mill, like the mill mashes it, mashes it, mashes it, until it's kind of uniform and laid out. Um, so if you have something that's really highly pigmented, there's a very strong concentration of these teeny, tiny particles in there that and sometimes can be kind of expensive if, you know, if you, whoever you're sourcing them from. I know Daniel Smith, when I was reading up on this, they have a set of, um, like a series, I guess, of paints. They're called like the, I want to say it's called Genuine, but basically they take actual minerals from the earth, like we're talking like amethyst and lapis lazuli, like these fancy stones, and they're crushing them and turning them into pigments for paint. Um, and initially I was like, man, that's got to be expensive, you know, to, to do that. Um, particularly since when you look at like a regular stone, um, it's not very, in fact, I have an amethyst. I'll be right back. I'm going to show you. Okay. So I actually have some, um, gems here. This is my amethyst, um, that I got from some kind of cavern. And, and I think in like Southern Missouri or Southwest Missouri, I can't, can't remember. But this little guy cost me like, it was like a dollar for that. Just this little nugget right here, which doesn't seem like much, but it may have been more than a dollar. I can't even remember. But if you think about it, it's just this little tiny rock that's not even very big. And this, this particular rock, um, will, will probably not even <laughs> fill like, like one hundredth of this bottle. So it, it takes a lot of this to fill one of those. Um, and also believe it or not, this is a tiger's eye. You can kind of see it shimmer there a little bit. Um, but this is like the raw form. So you could polish that and polish it and it would look like a tiger's eye. But um, the Daniel Smith Genuine Collection also has a tiger's eye pigment paint. So um, this one may be a little bit easier to come by, but still on the same magnitude of like, you know, grinding this down and grinding it down to these little tiny pigment particles. Um, I was curious about them, but um, I'm not... I love color and these ones are to me don't seem like they would be very um, I guess they could be light fast but I would think they'd be very granular very very um light I guess in color like just very faint not very uh, rich like you know with the difference here you've got this really rich color versus this um, I don't know so I guess I just they're not that expensive relative to their regular tube like this tube cost me I think six dollars on sale this is the five mil tube they have the bigger ones that are roughly like and this is a series one too so it's not even like so series one starts at like uh something like nine six to nine dollars for the five mil for series one and goes I don't even know for series four goes up to like, I don't know, 15 bucks or something or $17. I don't know. And that's just for the five mil tube for their 15 mil tubes. It's a lot higher anyway. Um, so I'm going to this, <laughs> I've been rambling on. Um, but, uh, I guess ultimately what I would say, if you want like to look at the cold press again, here's the cold press. Um, we have the Daniel Smith on this side and the Cotman on this side. Oops. I'd say that um, I don't really see a terrible huge difference in like the strength of the pigment between these two. Um, this one looks a little bit more granular than this one and it looks a little bit more green uh, than this one looks more blue green than the Cotman, um, even though it's supposedly the same pigment. And I would say the same thing about this, although on hot hot press paper, the Cotman shows up a little bit more blue than it does on its cold press counterpart. But compared to the Daniel Smith, the Daniel Smith is a lot more, it just shows up so much better on the hot press paper than the Cotman does. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's my little experiment on this. And, um, 
I will probably try to do a picture or something just to see how well I can um, compare the two that way. But that's all for now. Um, thanks for listening to my rambling, and I hope you learned something here because I certainly did. And uh, maybe I'll do another comparison with a core versus a Cotman or something like that because core seems to be of the same uh, price and quality as the Daniel Smith. So. Um, anyway, so that's it for now. Thanks for listening to me and yeah.